Hi, I'm Sue Stockdale, your host of Access to Inspiration, the podcast with a social mission to help you be inspired by people who may be unlike you. We bring you guests from around the world, from different backgrounds, different ages, genders and ethnicities, whom you may not otherwise get to hear, because they are not celebrities or big names necessarily in their industries. In fact, since we began, almost 50% of our guests have been first-time podcast guests, and we're really proud of that. What we do aim to show you is that most of the guests have a guiding purpose that drives them, and their focus is on creating an impact on something that is bigger than themselves. They've all made mistakes, they've overcome challenges, and they show up in the conversations as human beings, authentic and real. Whether it's a software developer in his 30s who overcame mental health challenges and wants to help others, or a grandmother in her 90s who was the first woman to ski across the Greenland ice cap on an unsupported expedition. We hope their stories inspire you to transcend your day-to-day challenges and reflect on how you show up in the world. Think of this podcast like a box of chocolates. You will find a mix in here and some subjects and guests may be more appeal to you than others. Well, we encourage you to dive in regardless to try something new and to listen with curiosity and interest. Put yourself into the shoes of the guest. What must be like for them? Or think about what questions you would want to ask that person if you had the opportunity. That's where inspiration can come from, when you gain a new perspective on the world. Turning attention to news about our team, we are delighted that our collaboration with Squadcast continues. Squadcast is a remote recording platform which empowers podcasters by capturing high-quality audio and video conversations that listeners love. You can find out more about them at squadcast.fm. We've also got a new member of our team, Elliot Rushton, who's doing a wonderful job on the social media. I asked Elliot about what he enjoys about working on the podcast. For me, it comes down to two things. The first is sharing those inspirational stories that each guest has. And while they have those similar messages sometimes, the experiences and the stories behind each one really makes each message different. And the second is the opportunity to stretch myself creatively by creating the graphics, the videos that everyone sees on social media. And have you been inspired by any of the guests in particular? Yeah, two episodes stand out for me really so the first would be episode 65 which is the one with jamie ramsey as the guest and the second would be number 75 with adi andrew olomola and both of them are kind of different reasons as well so jamie's episode was the first episode that i worked on with access to inspiration and i thought it was just quite amazing how passionate he was to keep exploring and pushing himself. Whereas I think a lot of people will be able to associate with the message that Adi Anju put across in her episode, just because I know a lot of people who have had some form of imposter syndrome or have struggled with being heard in their own lives. So it was quite an interesting episode for me to listen to as well, because sometimes I can struggle with that, getting heard through a lot of noise as well. And on to series 11. Our theme for this series is health and well-being, and over the next few weeks we will bring you a variety of guests whose stories relate to this theme. With Dyslexia Awareness Week happening in October, one of our guests will be Abigail Griebelbauer, who started writing books for children that include characters with dyslexia and ADHD. So my background is actually special education, elementary education. That's what the degree I graduated from, and I ended up teaching full-time for two years inside the classroom as a fifth grade teacher. And it really was that second year that I realized if I'm telling my students that they need to follow their dreams and really follow whatever aspirations they have in life, that I have to do that as well. The reason behind creating the children's book was because I didn't see the representation in the children's book. And so I thought that that was the perfect way of allowing this conversation to start at a young age. Because I think it's really important for kids who are younger to know what dyslexia is and know what ADHD is, because if they see themselves in these characters, they can go home and they can ask, like, what is dyslexia? Like, and talk about it with their parents. 
and then potentially even get a diagnosis in the future to something that they relate to in the book. Another guest I'll be speaking to is Brian Sacchetta, who is author of a mental health focused book series and a website titled Get Out of Your Head. Brian's not a therapist or a psychologist, but a software developer who applied problem solving approaches that he had learned from work to manage his anxiety and mental health issues. I would read a book, I would listen to something on tape, I would read a journal article, something like that. And that piece of content would have some sort of strategy and say like, when you're anxious, try this specific tactic. And I would then take that tactic to different events in my life, whether it was that job interview or going skydiving, and I would test it out. And I would try to say to myself, does this work for me? If it does, let's put it in this bucket over here. If it doesn't, let's forget about it. Let's move on. So there was definitely that aspect to it where it was like I was going out and A-B testing different strategies. We'll also focus on healthcare in a slightly different way. Sebastian Rohr works in tech in the area of identity and access management, as well as information security. And Sebastian has put his skills to good use to improve healthcare and quality of life in some developing countries. The last one was a trip to Pakistan, one of the largest communities on Earth. It's like 270 million citizens right now. The projections say that there's going to be 350 million Pakistani within the decade. So the growth rate is really important. And as Pakistan suffers from one of the lowest child registration rates in the world, it is super duper important for them to have a working scheme so that every child gets registered, every child gets their birth certificate, so that every child gets school education, that they get health care and everything. And that was a project I did with UNICEF. And I'm pretty proud that I was able to contribute my share there. And that is definitely impact. That is, for me, something where I can put my knowledge and my capabilities to work and actually help millions of people where it is really, really necessary. And to kick off next week, our first guest will be Liz Bendit, who is one of the most positive and upbeat people I've met recently considering she's survived four different cancer diagnoses over the course of eight years. My kids have had such a unique experience growing up with a mom that is sometimes really sick. And I think it's taught them to be a lot more compassionate, understanding that sometimes people are going through trauma that you can't see. And I think that that is such an unbelievably valuable lesson. When you experience it yourself, you're so much more, I think, empathetic as a result. And I see that empathy in them and it makes me very proud. They also learn to be more responsible. Sometimes mom can't make dinner. I'm just too tired and they will make pancakes for dinner or order a pizza or it's eggs and toast night. We call in our house sometimes is forage night. Like it's every man for himself, figure it out. There's food in the fridge. And we started that when they were young. I mean, I want to say maybe when they were eight and 10, like that kind of idea that maybe they need to help pitch in because things that were in a weird space right now and it's not business as usual. And also it right as a mother has showed me what my kids can do. Hey, eight-year-olds can make scrambled eggs. It's okay. They're a little runny. It's edible. It's all fine. So things like that, I think, have been really helpful to us as a family. So there's lots to look forward to in the coming weeks. Remember, you can hop on over to accesstoinspiration.org, our website, to get transcriptions for every episode or listen to our extensive back catalogue. You can also keep in touch with us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Or just drop us a message and give us your feedback. We love to hear from you. I look forward to connecting with you soon.